we think that it's possible to address all of global carbon and air pollution problems simultaneously by transitioning every single country and state to 100% clean renewable energy, particularly wind, water, and solar power. We calculate 22 million new jobs worldwide by such a transition. Onshore and offshore wind, uh, solar photovoltaics on rooftops and in power plants, utility scale solar photovoltaics, also utility scale concentrated solar power, and then geothermal power, existing, not new, hydroelectric power, and tiny amounts of tidal and wave power. And we find for each country of the world that we tested that it's possible to power each country entirely by wind, water, and solar. Electricity is much more efficient than burning things. For example, take a, a gasoline car. A gasoline car, only 17 to 20 percent of the energy in the gasoline goes to move the car, and the rest is waste heat. If you have an electric car, of the electricity that goes into the car and is stored in batteries, 80 to 86 percent goes to move the car. So we reduce significantly, uh, over you know, 60 70 percent, the energy need in transportation. When you average over all sectors, there's about a 32 percent a reduction in energy demand due to this efficiency. And then we can squeeze out another about 7% end use energy efficiency improvements beyond that. So we get about 39% reduction of power demand over all sectors. Okay, so the problem with wind and solar, for example, is the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. So the concern has been that the grid will be unstable, you'll have high costs to keep it stable if we go to large scale wind, water, and solar power. But it turns out this is not the case, it's actually the opposite. In 2014, more than a fourth of Germany's electricity consumption was renewable, and about half in four other European countries with modest or no hydropower. None of them added bulk storage. All of them sustained high reliability for Denmark and Germany, about 10 times better than America's. The actual demand is variable itself, okay? So base load power doesn't really mean anything because you always, even today, and Historically, you've always needed some kind of peaking to fill in the gap. So like nuclear power, which provides base load, does not, does not help you actually match power demand. Coal, which is primarily base load, does not help you meet the peaks. It just gives you kind of some flat underlying amount of energy. But we found that by electrifying all sectors, so that's transportation, heating, and cooling, industry, in addition to electricity, it actually makes it easier to match power demand at a cost of about 10 and a half to 10.6 cents per kilowatt hour, which is similar to the energy cost of a fossil fuel system. 